I want the best three guys going. You got to win that wild card. That's the only thing that matters. I don't care about Thursday. We'll figure it out. But I want Corbin available full strength on Tuesday in case you got to pitch to a couple left, even stock us, whoever. Um, so we'll see what they do. That's just my yeah, thought. Yeah, but now, but now there's the balance of it. Like, it's not that they don't care at all about home field. It's just do you care enough to pitch Max Sunday? So mm-hmm. I guess when I say I don't care about home field, I don't care about it in the context of Scherzer. I would say if you have a chance to pad it up on Saturday, which you might. I mean, if the that's if the, the Brewers ideal lose, situation. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but I, what you're what they, you're they facing, yeah. but what you're facing though is you're probably going to have home field hinging on like Joe Ross or Eric Fetty or something, or Jeremy Hellickson. Well, yeah, Jeremy I mean, Hellickson, God forbid. Right. He's on the team. Yeah, it, it's a weird, um, it's a weird situation. But again, yeah, I would say on those two questions, I would pitch Corbin for it, and maybe you would only even pitch him a hundred pitches, and he still he could still pitch Tuesday out of the bullpen. That's like. Your in between start side session if it's that's, twenty pitches. That's yeah. true. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then you don't pitch max. So that's what I would do. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what they're gonna do. I think that's what they're gonna do. I don't know. I just the Brewers are an average team away from home and they're really good at home. And the and the Nats are a really good well, they're a good team anyway, but they're a really good team at home and slightly better than average away. But the and, Brewers don't hit sure. And their offensive numbers are better here than at OA. Um, I don't know. It's it's just a it's a good debate, I guess. I will say, I was there for the NLCS last year against the Dodgers, and that place was insane. Right. Like, with the roof closed and the noise, and, right. and, the, and it, it, it was nuts. So, but, like, also, like, who, who does noise benefit? Like, I don't think it's, like, a, an NFL situation where you're making noise when people are calling the plays. Like, there's noise for the entire game in baseball. In some ways, in a way, team can benefit from that, too, just because it's energy. So, I don't know. Home field advantage in baseball for me is sort of a sort of a wash. And by and and by the way, the Cardinals, we they may not have played the uh, Brewers. They may play the Cardinals. That's true. That's true. Um, they could play the Cardinals. The Cardinals, and are, they just got smacked around in Bush. So I don't know. It, it, it's it's a whole weird. I situation. feel like I'd be more scared of the Cardinals of the Brewers. Maybe the hotter team. Brewers definitely the hotter I, team. I'm more um, scared of the Cardinals. Cardinals home uh, record forty nine and 21, 49 and 29, 41 and forty away. Brewers forty nine and thirty two at home, forty and thirty away. What? Yeah. Obviously, anything can happen in a one-game playoff. Um, I don't know. I just like any advantage if I can it, get. The way the math works, because I haven't looked at it, if it's the Cardinals, does that mean we're likely to host? Yeah, who wins the tiebreaker on no. the Cardinals? It doesn't really matter. It's um, Well, it just it, that's a better record they'll host, but if they tie either team, they go on the road. Right, right. So they lose the tiebreaker to so, the Cardinals. So Tom, Jesse Doherty covers the Nationals for the Washington Post. I saw <laughs> that you thought anybody who was anti-celebration, Jason Bishop, uh, terrible take, right? Yeah, I mean, like the thing is, I like I don't like to make the argument of like you don't see the the day to day because like very few people get the privilege uh, and access to like see what these guys go through. Not just seven to ten every night, but like two p.m. to three a.m. and right. their preparation and what they do. And but like I I am someone who gets to see that, so I guess offering the perspective that like they're in this. I mean, this is a six month grind of like. A lot of stuff, not just what you see. Actually, very little of what you see is part of the whole sort of way they get to this point. you got, you got to let these guys celebrate. And I also fall down on the point of, like, we, we have this conversation so much about the accessibility of baseball and its popularity. And, like, the people who are, like, annoyed that baseball, like, people don't watch or people aren't coming out of the ballpark are also the ones who are like, but don't celebrate. Uh, right. Like, no, I think it's probably good for the sport that you can, like, have guys have a little bit of emotion and personality. Like no. the whole fall in line aspect of baseball is such a tired and old concept that, and I think like the idea of not celebrating the wild card is just like a continuation of that. It's fine. I mean, Brewers did it too. I mean, I, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. Yeah, everyone does it. Yeah. Everyone. Um, all right. So let's get back to to this weekend uh, playing Cleveland. Now Cleveland's probably got to sweep the Nats, um, and Tampa probably has to lose two of three against Toronto for Cleveland to get in there. So. You know, we thought that this was going to mean a lot to Cleveland. It still does. They're still alive, but you know, they may be eliminated. You know, before Saturday. But um, so, who do you th- do you think Corbin will go Saturday, and who do you think will pitch Sunday? Yeah, I think Corbin will go Saturday, and then Sunday I could see Joe Ross. Um, right, he'll be on regular rest for the doubleheader, and he was pretty good. I mean, it's, it's he's tough to watch pitch sometimes because he's wild, but his stuff's good enough where he can kind of like get out and spice himself in that regard. But when you see the walks pile up and he's a little erratic around the zone, you're like, you kind of think pitch to pitch. It's like, this guy's like losing it all the time. But then you kind of, sometimes you look up at the end and it's like, well, six innings, two runs. Right. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. So he, I'd say he's not the most fun guy to watch, but of the three, Eric Fetty, Jeremy Hellickson or him, which will be the options for Sunday in place of Scherzer. I'd say he's 
gives you the best bet to win. And then you have all the other guys available. Like, those guys aren't making the postseason roster. So if Joe Ross is bad in the first inning, Eric Fetty can pitch whatever. So, Correct. yeah, I would say both Corbin, Joe Ross is the weekend setup. Now, let me ask you this. If they do hold Max out and he starts Tuesday, is, is Strasburg okay emotionally and mentally, hmm. psychologically, <laughs> to come out of the pen, which he's never done, I don't think, not with the Nats. I've never seen it. Supposedly he did it with his first year in college. At San okay. Diego would, State. He, would he be okay? Because I want to see him. I don't want to see Rainey. All right. I don't want to see uh, Rodney. I want to see Strasburg if they need it. Yeah. No, I, I think he would be. I, I don't think it's like how you get the most out of him, but I think <laughs> he understands that. I mean, a lot of this year with Strasburg has been about maturity. I, and I think to some extent it's a little bit of a cliche, but like we've seen a lot of situations where innings go sideways and he bears down, and people have said that in another year he would have stomped around or gotten mad at the umpire or gotten mad at his catcher, but he sort of channeled. Like I mean, He's 30 now. He's hitting the back end of his career. He's kind of turned a corner in that regard. And I think pitching out of the bullpen would be another continuation of that. That said, like if you want him for the six, you might start warming him up in the second. Like he, <laughs> like he really might need a long run up. Like he has this routine, and and we might see that. Like there might be like, whoa, is Strasser warming up for the third inning? No, he's warming up for the seventh. He just has to start now. Right. Um, <laughs> right. So it could be really, it could be really um, kind of weird in that regard. But no, I think that five guys should pitch in that game um, at max, and it's Corbin. It's not in this order, but Scherzer, Strasburg, Corbin. Doolittle Hudson, and I don't think any other people should touch the mound uh, or come even close to it. So, yeah, I mean, Strasburg's in that mix, so I think uh, I think we should. We, I think we will see. All right, give me the Tuesday lineup. I mean, obviously we know Trey and Robles and Soto and those guys, but I guess the question marks would be first base. I assume Cabrera second. Maybe that's a bad assumption, but I assume that. Um, so I guess first base and catcher, right? It would be Suzuki. Yeah, I would. Um, so my lineup would be. I would catch Gomes. I think the defense is better, and you just you don't you don't know what Kurt is right now. And also, he gives you a really good right-handed pinch hitter. Okay. With you know, and and and, and like if he comes in for Kurt or, or Jan in the spot, rather, like he could he could stay the rest of the game, mm-hmm. catch the last four innings or something. Um, and I would I would start Kendrick at first, Cabrera at second, Trey at short, Rendon at third, Soto in left, right. Robles in center, and eating him right. Right. I think that makes sense. The only the only difference I might have would be the catcher, but okay, I'll buy your your rationale there. Yeah. And if Milwaukee, if Milwaukee um, is the team that they play, they're playing in Colorado this weekend. I think Anderson would be their pitcher. I mean, I don't know. They out there. But. Yeah, it could be Chase Anderson. It could be Brandon Woodruff. But it will be yeah. like you'll, you'll see like nine arms. Right, right, right. But the biggest thing for me is too. that but if you if you're down like one run in the sixth inning, they're gonna bring in Josh Hader and say we're gonna either lose, win or lose on his arm. Absolutely. So, yeah. Like. Having the right-handed bats like Brian Dozier, Ryan Zimmerman, um, you know Kendrick in the lineup already, but like off the bench, like you're gonna Kurt Suzuki and another right-handed bat. So like giving yourself every opportunity to pinch hit, like you might pinch hit for Adam Eaton and then bring in Michael Taylor for defense. But like you just in that spot, like every at bat you're gonna have to if you're gonna win every matchup. I think if they carry enough position players, they could carry up to like 17 or 18 guys. Um, you can give yourself an opportunity to try and at least win every matchup on the front end. I mean, of course, process and result vary, but um, you, you kind of are able to do that if, if, if you finagle your roster the right way. 